So again, just have an extra mat or a pillow nearby for the relaxation. So feet hip width apart, toes straight ahead, sitting bones down, ribs in and up, and shoulders relaxed, and then crown to the seat. Kind of spread your toes out, no gripping, just breathe and release any tension. And then inhale, bring your arms out to the sides. Exhale, hands to your heart. Stretch it out to the front with your shoulders down. And exhale, hands behind, clasp your fingertips, lift your heart, and exhale over. So come into your forward bend as deep as you like, and relax. You can bend your knees a little, or straighten them and stretch your hamstrings on the back of your legs, your chest. Tuck in your chin a little bit, let the back of your neck loosen. Hands towards your head so that shoulders start getting a little release. And then slowly chin in, sitting bones down, wind your way up, slowly coming to the top into that upper body or your back. So again, push your shoulders and shoulder blades down and your ribs in as you lift your heart. And then inhale to the top, exhale, and back to mountain. Take a moment, feel your spine. And again, same thing. Inhale, arms out, stretch it. Exhale, hands to your heart, stretch to the front, and exhale behind you. Clasp the opposite way, and again, stretch into the back bend. Exhale, over. So again, relax, let that back get a good stretch because we're gonna be working it a little bit. And then inhale your way up, and lift your heart. And again, maximize that stretch through your spine by pushing the sitting bones down and the crown away. And then inhale upright and release. Feel a little warmth through your body, a little more circulation. And we'll do our side stretch. So arms out, palms to the ceiling and over your shoulders. Pass your hands and clasp them. And bring your arms back by your ears. Sitting bones down, stretch out through the head, and release into your side stretch. So press your foot down, reach your head away, and maximize those rib openings. Stretch along the oblique. And then inhale back up, and switch to the other hand. And again, shoulder blades down, sitting bones down, lean without twisting, make sure that top shoulder isn't moving forward. And again, push it down through the foot, out through the head and the hands. Breathe into those ribs, let them get a good stretch. And inhale back up, release back in the mountain pose. So take a moment feeling your ribs along the side a little bit more open. And we'll do our twist. So remember, base of the spine down and base of the skull up. So that spine keeps stretching apart. And arms at shoulder level, palms up and over your shoulders. Clasp your elbows, pull those shoulder blades and sitting bones down. And stretch your head up. Exhale for your twist. Keep the knees a little bent if you want. Keep the weight on both feet. Stretch as you breathe and exhale. And just deepen into your twist forward bend as much and as little as you can. And again, just keep the arms as much as you can by your ears. And kind of lift the sitting bones, keeping the back of your legs as straight as they want to be. And then stay in your twist on your way up and look toward the ceiling, lifting your heart. Pull your elbows back, but be careful with your lower back now because it's twisted. And then inhale up, exhale to the center, switch your arms around. And again, shoulder blades down, stretch it up, and exhale for your Lengthen and breathe in, give it over as you exhale, and relax. So just take a few moments to breathe as you come into your twist forward bend on this side. See if you've shifted that 
weight to one foot or the other and see if you can even it out. And then on an inhalation, work your way up. And heart to the ceiling, elbows back, shoulders down, coming to that upper body, the back bend, just gently. And as you breathe, relax. And then inhale up, exhale to the center, arms up, and oh, let's do it shoulder level and pivot. So come into your forward position as parallel to the floor as you can. So the chest and chin are a little bit forward, but not too much for the back of the neck. So you can pull that chin back a little bit toward your chest. Arms right at shoulder level, just stretch them out, sitting bones and crown reaching away as well. And then just drop them to right down. Let your body relax, especially through that lower back. Pull in if you want a little extra with the hands behind your legs. Or not, your choice. And then arms back to the front. And again, just wind your way up to mountain pose. So let's do a little chest expansion first. So bring your hands, fingertips together right in front of your heart with the elbows at shoulder level. And then we're gonna pull the elbows back, separating your hands, and then bring them back together, and then fling them apart behind you, and keep them as much at shoulder level as you can. And then back to the center. So back, together, all the way back, together. Back, together, all the way back, together. Back, together, all the way back, together. Now remember, keep your shoulders down while you're doing it. Together, all the way back, together. One more time. Back, together. And release. So a little more circulation through that top of your body. Now let's support the lower back. So Base of your palms along the lower shoulder blades, fingertips toward your waist and toward your hips. And then rotate those elbows toward each other. So if you're having a problem doing that, remember you can put a strap around them and pull them a little bit more so that you're expanding across that point of your heart. And then lift your heart. Keep your hips about where they are and look overhead. So only as much into that lower back as your body wants to go. So you can do this mostly as an upper body back bend with those elbows really coming toward each other. Or you can move a little deeper into the back bend so that you're looking a little further behind you. And again, don't overdo on your neck. You wanna keep that chin a little bit toward your chest. Heart high, keep breathing, maximize, or not. And then inhale back upright, and release back into mountain. So just take a moment, feel your body, release any tension. And if you've got a wall nearby or your chair, we're gonna open the heart a little bit more. So standing in front of the wall, you want the hands first at shoulder level, and then bring them the length of the palm above the shoulder level. Take a good step back, push your hips behind you and drop your heart toward the floor. And just keep letting your heart sink as the top of your head crown reaches toward your hands. Keep relaxing, keep pushing back through the sitting bones so you can get the hips right over your ankles. If it's too easy, take another little step. Or if you want to do it with your chair, you can do that too. Make sure if you're in your chair that you're allowing your hands to press toward the floor and your heart toward the ceiling, keeping the rest of the body nicely aligned. With the sitting bones down, knees over your ankles. And chin tucking toward your chest so the back of your neck doesn't crunch too much. And then if you're seated, you can sit back up, take a moment to breathe, and then do it again with the opposite clasp for your hands. So if you're on the wall, just keep sinking because it's a good heart opener 
and a good central back bend. And then if you're seated, again, chin towards your chest, hands towards your neck, and we'll get rid of our chairs. And if you're on the wall, you want to just tuck in your chin, take a step forward, and release back again into mountain pose. Options, depending on what you've got available. So again, take a moment, feeling your spine, maybe a little bit more energized by all that nice heart opening and a little stimulation even through that low back. So let's stretch up and pivot over again all the way down the dry back. Hands up on your shins, go ahead and straighten your spine. So sitting bones toward the wall behind you, ground toward the wall ahead of you, chin in a little bit, arms straight, knees straight, and spine straight. So just keep lengthening in that halfway up stretch. And then exhale back, rag down. And another roll up. So see if you can feel from the bottom of your spine just slowly coming all the way back into that. Hands to your heart, look at them, and inhale all the way up. So the arms are coming in fully extended. You're looking at your hands. You can keep them there, or again, you can bring them behind you for more back bend. Jump over doing the lower back while it's not supported. And then exhale it, bow your hands back down, all the way toward the mat, and into child's pose. So hips back on your heels, hands next to you, and forehead toward the floor. Remember, knees together for that good lower back stretch, or apart if you want to breathe. And again, just relax. Shoulders forward a little bit so that that back of your body can also get a good stretch. And then inhale and sit up on your heels, slide off, bring your legs to the end of the mat. And we're going to use that core to roll down slowly onto the mat. So get onto your floor and get comfortable. So just move back and forth a little bit to let that lower back release. And hands next to your sides, palms up and down, your choice. So I'm going to slide the sitting bones toward your heels, bend your knees, bring your heels all the way up toward your hips. Yeah, keep the fat feet flat on the floor. So a little inner roll for the thighs to make sure those knees stay straight up toward the ceiling, not flopping out. And keep pushing that um, sitting bone area toward your heels so that sacral lower back area gets good support. So just relax there, kind of roll your shoulder blades toward your waist and your shoulders down to the mat as well. Get your whole upper body. Now we're going to lift the ribs and roll the sitting bones down toward the floor. So from your shoulder blades, to your sitting bones is an arch, and you've got space under your lower back. And then sliding the sitting bones, bringing the whole spine back down, kind of contracting through the core, through the abs, come into that starting position. And just do it a few times, your own pace, and your own maximizing or minimizing. So remember, the ribs come up, the sitting bones go down, there's an arch under you, and then everything connects back down with a little more contraction so that we're looking at the area as well. So this is a low back strength when we actually do in physical therapy for people who have injuries to their backs. Yes, I learned it from Mike Chu. And when you do it, you can do this first thing in the morning, even in bed. And it's just a good way to get that lower back a little bit more limited for the day, and it strengthens the support your spine has with the muscles in your lower back, and it also supports your core area, letting that strengthen a little bit more. So that if you do this every day, it's a nice, nice little abdominal workout as well as a back strengthening. So then coming back to a neutral spine, just take a moment to relax. 
And then extend your legs out. We're going to roll over onto the knees. So just coming into resting crocodile, just relax your hips down. And you can turn your head to one side, shoulders toward the mat. And on an exhalation, turn your head to the opposite side. And just take a few moments there to breathe. And then we're going to bring the forehead to the floor. And turn your palms down. And then lift one foot and stretch it back so your hip bones stay down. And again, the knee is toward the floor. The top of the foot is toward the floor on that leg you're raising. So maybe a little inner rotation on your thigh to keep that alignment for your leg as you bring it up off the floor. Shoulders toward the floor. Just keep extending out through the base of your toes on that extended leg. And you can lift it a little bit higher if you love it. The higher you go, the more you're going to feel it in your lower back. So don't go too high if you've got any low back issues. And then exhale that foot down. Tuck your forehead to the mat. And allow everything to relax. And then the same thing for the other side. You can keep your forehead down or slide it forward a little bit and as you bring that other foot up. Again, hip bones down, base of the toes reaching out. Roll that thigh in if you need to. Keep that knee toward the floor. And again, keep stretching through the leg and out through the crown and as you lift that knee only as high as your body wants it to go. So breathe. Relax. Maximize or minimize depending on what your back needs. And then slowly lower the feet. And again, forehead to the floor, just relax. Turn your hands, palms down. And stretch your fingertips back. Stretch both feet back. Lift your feet, keeping that reach out through the base of your toes. And then you can rotate your face forward, crown up. And chest forward, chin in a little bit. Hands up and reaching for your feet, coming into that boat back, the boat back bend as high or not as your body would like. So, again, breathe, maximize or minimize. Just for, remember, you can always exhale back down anytime you need to, unless maybe a little higher. And then slowly, legs down, hands down, and forehead to the mat. And then hands under your shoulders and push back. Your nice little forward bend release in child's pose. <coughs> Sorry, guys. So take a moment there in child's pose, feeling that stretch along the back of your body where we've been contracting. And allow yourself a little bit of a relaxation. And then bring your hands out in front, pivot up. You're going to roll the hips down and the whole body all the way back. And again, onto your belly. Rest in crocodile with the head to the side if you'd like. Knees palm up, pivot down in your choice. And turn your head the other direction when you need to for that neck to give an even stretch on both sides. Now we're going to bring the arms overhead. And then reach one foot back, keep the hip bones down, and lay, raise that foot onto the floor. Again, keep the knee toward the floor on that leg that you're raising, so rolling in at the top of the thigh helps to do that. And then take your opposite arm up and stretch it forward. So good lengthening through the whole spine as you get into this kind of sideways stretch. Take a breath. Mm -hmm. Turn your face forward and crown up. But keep your chin in a little bit. Don't crunch the neck too much. Raise the foot only as far as you want. The hand only as far as you want. And then everything releases back. And again, take a moment breathing. Just relaxing. Get everything ready for the opposite side. 
Toes back on that other leg. Keep the hip bone down as you start. Bringing that foot up. Make sure the alignment is correct. And opposite arm comes up. Stretch it out. So it can hand away from each other. And again, you can rotate We're looking a little bit forward. And then let the crown come toward the ceiling a little bit more. If you like, you can reach that back then a little bit further. So keep stretching it out. Maximize your knot. Remember, personal practice, you decide what your body is. Lengthen, breathe, and then exhale. And let it split in and out. Take a moment there. Breathe. Straighten everything out. Get ready because we're going to put it all together. So, feet hip width apart, toes reaching back. Keep those knees toward the floor. And as you raise both feet, just a little bit, or a little bit more, your choice. And then arms forward and up, looking forward, crown up, and Superman pose. Just flying through the air, chin toward your chest a little bit so you can survey the ground beneath you to find what's going on that you need to save the world. Stretch it out, lengthen, maximize or not. Remember, this is intense on your lower back. And then feet down. Hands to the floor and put it down. Take a moment there, just resetting. And bring your hands again under your shoulders and back into child's pose. And take a good long stretch through that lower back. And then inhaling. Sit up on your heels, and we're going to, if you have a mat or some padding under your knees, in case your floor isn't cushiony enough, we're going to be up on our knees for this next one. So fold your mat over or find a little cushiony, and maybe a gardening pad or something under your knees, and we're going to come all the way up onto the knees. So hips over the knees, shoulders over the hips, everything nice and lined up. And just like we did when we were standing, we're going to put the heel of the palm on the bottom of your shoulder blades and the fingertips down for your hips. So get a good support there. And just like we did before, move those elbows toward each other. So make sure your elbows are coming toward each other, not staying out toward the side so you get good palm support on your lower back. So this is supported camel. You can go as little or as much as you'd like coming into the back bend in that lower back, or you can focus into the upper heart and move it toward the ceiling. If you go into the unsupported camel, do not maximize in your lower back. You want to make sure that that is a chest expansion with the heart going to the ceiling. So keep your chin a little bit toward your chest so your back of your neck can keep stretching. Again, you don't want to crunch that too much. And just allow the whole chest to expand, the elbows to come toward each other, and the whole body to go as much into that back bend as it likes. And then chin toward your chest, and again, sinking back on your heels, coming just into regular kneeling position, trying to feel the difference in your spine and through your body. Take a moment, just breathing. So we're going to go up into full camel if you want to. First we're going to do one hand and then the other and keep supported. And only if you want, we'll do both hands. It's up to you, remember, personal practice. You can always stay in that supported version. I personally really like the supported version, but we'll try it out. So come on back up, hips right over your knees, shoulders right over your hips as you start. Let's get into that hand support position. So heel of the palm into the shoulder blades, fingertips down, elbows toward each other. Keep the hips over your knees and lift your heart, looking up, don't crunch the neck too much. Stay here, perfectly good position. If you want to try for your hand back onto your heel, you can tuck your toes under, that brings the heel up a little bit more so it's easier to reach. Or you can keep the bottom, top of your foot down and reach a little bit further to come into that position. 
So there's a little twist as you do just the one side. Keep the other hand still supporting. And then come back up, elbows toward each other. And again, you can take a nice little forward bend. Break. Take a breath. Just relax. And then face forward and coming back up and into your supported position for the other side. So once more, hands positioning, elbows toward each other, chest rising, maximizing or minimizing. Remember, your body determines what's right for you. Stay here, or tuck your toes, or not, and reach for your other heel, only if you want to go there. So again, feel the slight twist as you go into that version. Keep lengthening your spine, and then pushing off, press the hands back, Coming into that supported version and sinking back into child's pose, just relaxing into the forward one. And one last time we'll do it, coming into both hands on your heels only if you want to. It's much more intense. So again, knees, hips, shoulders lined up. Support that spine, elbows toward each other, and head reaching that chin in a little bit. Stay there, or reach your hands or your heels and push your heart up toward the ceiling a little bit more. Maximize or not, you can have your toes tucked under or your heels to be a little higher. And then to release, hands again to your spine, to your back, and sink again into your forward bend for a little release. Take a moment there and breathe. And if you've got your extra mat, we're going to use it for our relaxation this morning. And if you've got pillows, you can get them as well. So find that. And if you're using the mat the long way, you can position that on the mat and bring the base of your body against the mat and then just roll onto it with your arms draping over the side a little heart opening during your relaxation head is on the mat and upper body fully supported if you've got a pillow you can do the same thing if you've got a long pillow or and you can do this with the mat also you can get a little bit more into that upper body with the mat crossways on your other mat so that it comes to your shoulder blades so that you're again just allowing that chest to expand. So this works also with the pillow. You can put it right under that shoulder blade area. So the bigger your pillow is, the more support you'll have under your back. And then just hands, palms up slightly away from your hips, back of your head on the surface beneath you, getting good support. And a little upper body arch into that back bend for the relaxation. Roll your thighs toward each other, knees toward the ceiling, or let them flop apart a little bit, your choice. And breathe. So go ahead and allow your body to release. If you're finding the mat or pillow under you uncomfortable, you can always rework it. You don't have to stay there. So take a few breaths. Just letting your body open across the heart, relax through the spine, and to shift the sitting bones a little bit toward your heels again, getting some support in that lower back so that you're not overstraining it as you're in that slight arch of the back bend. And then just allow your body to release any tension. Feel the heart expansion, the spine lengthening through that back bend. And the whole body just releasing into that surface beneath you. Let your belly move as you breathe. Exhale any tension. And just allow the body just to release completely into that connection beneath you. As you relax your body and allow it to grow heavier. Just release awareness of your body completely. No need to think about any parts. Just 
Let your spine release your neck, your hips, your shoulders, your whole body. Just release. And as you release awareness of the body parts, just let other thoughts come into your mind release as well. No need to remember the past. No need to anticipate the future. Just allow your thoughts to drift as easily as your breath. As the thoughts flow in, just let them flow out. And exhale, releasing any kind of And as your breath deepens and your thoughts flow more freely, just let them go. And allow your awareness to release both your body and your mind. Find that peace within and just let your whole body fill with peace. Fill your mind with peace. Just be peace. If you want to stay relaxing, feel free to do that for a while longer. If you're ready to release, you're going to want to move the mat up from underneath you. And begin moving your body gently and stretching a little bit more. Getting ready for your final yoga hug of appreciation. So energy and awareness into the moment. Stretching those sitting bones towards your heels. Pulling your knees toward your heart. Wrap around and give yourself that big yoga hug. Nice little forward bend to stretch out that backward bend of body that we've been working today. And when you have enough hug of appreciation for your yoga and the work your body does every day, just release and roll to the side and sit back and get ready for whatever your day has ahead for you. Thanks for joining me this morning. If you feel well stimulated through your spine and ready for whatever's ahead.